I decided to take a little break from completing the drum machine in order to potentially add to it a sampler. So the sampler uh, is um, basically something that takes sound samples and incorporates them into a triggerable uh, audio that you can play along with the drum circuit. Um, and in doing my research, I found an uh, ISD1820 chip. And let's hear what it sounds like at full range. So the ISD1820 is a digital sampler it's a uh, chip, it's a lo-fi chip um, that basically can record and play back sounds. And it comes as a standalone chip, but more frequently it comes on this little module board. Um, you can get standalone chips from Amazon, but they take longer to ship. And this board, you can take the chip right off of the module if you want. The module board itself comes with all the extra accessories that are needed. Uh, in order to use the chip right out of the box. And basically, it comes with a microphone already attached. It's a little electric condenser microphone. It comes with three buttons um, already attached, a record, a play E, and a play L button. And it also comes with a little speaker, with a little speaker wire that you can see on the right side of the board. Um, and minimal stuff needs to be added to it in order to get it to work right out of the box. In this video, I will show you the modifications I made in order to make a pretty good sounding module board into a great sounding one. So the first thing I did to it was uh, basically change the speaker. When I first hooked up the speaker, it was pretty quiet sounding, and I'll show you later in this video. Um, and I got rid of the speaker altogether at some point and just put an output line where that little asterisk is. There's a little um, pin there that can be attached to an output line. Um, also, uh, what can be done is a switch being attached between the P and the E on the left side of the screen here. And finally, in order to control the pitch of the playback and record, you can remove the R4 resistor that's circled at the top of the screen. And that resistor, can be replaced with a circuit that will allow you to manually change pitch and as can be seen in a future video um, change the pitch using control voltage additionally a separate line in feature uh, can be added uh, if you take the microphone and desolder it from the board and you could add through the microphone input side a separate line so you can record off of an external audio device such as an uh, amplifier or an iPad. So I got one of these to experiment with and uh, maybe do some additions to my audio uh, work here. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Testing one, two, one, two. This is everything that the module comes with, and uh, it's basically a 0 0.5 watt speaker that's not so great. Testing one, two. As you can hear. Testing one, two. Testing. Testing. Your speaker is always better. When you press the record button and hold it down, uh, the LED light goes on at the top portion of the module, and this basically lets you know that you're recording. This uh, button is self-explanatory. The play E button is a play on an edge, um, a rising edge of a trigger. So in the minute you, or the second you uh, add a trigger signal to it, it plays the entire sample that's recorded. 
the play L basically plays on a level. It's a level detect. So if you change the level to 5 volts, as long as that level um, on the input is at 5 volts, i.e. as long as that button is depressed and held down, the sample plays. So you can cut it short by letting it go and restarting it, and this allows for some interesting audio effects with a, a remix of a sample, um, allowing things like DJ scratch effect and things like that. So uh, the possibilities are endless with this particular uh, area. Uh, each of these buttons also corresponds to an input pin on the left side of the board. A unique feature of uh, this chip is that uh, pin 10, um, the ROSC, which is a resistor-controlled um, oscillator. And basically, according to the data sheet, this is a resistor that goes to ground from pin 10 and it controls the sampling rate both uh, and the pitch of the record and of the playback. Now, it the module comes, um, according to the data sheet, with a 100K resistor going from pin 10 to ground. However, this circuit can be modified, and this is corresponding to the R4 resistor on the module. And uh, Casper Electronics, uh, who did a video about using the ISD1820, did a great job of uh, designing a manual controlled pitch effect here. Um, and you can see that uh, in the schematic. The resistor that controls the um, sampling rate and the playback speed uh, is R4, which you can see circled at the top of the picture here. Um, that resistor can be gently desoldered and removed and at the lower portion, um, a separate wire resoldered uh, in order to uh, duplicate the circuit so you can make a controllable uh, pitch with a 100K potentiometer. The caveat is you have to record at about 100K resistance to ground in order for the chip not to glitch out. That connection at the lower uh, part of R4, where R4 is removed, is connected through a one or through a 10k resistor to a 100k potentiometer at the center pin, and um, the upper part of the pin is connected to a 470 kilo ohm resistor. Here it says 220, but 470 kilo ohm works best for lower pitches, and the other side, pin three, goes to ground. And um, that will allow a complete con manual control over the pitch. Now I added, um, instead of R4, I took out that R4 resistor there. And I added a potentiometer to control the pitch. So I recorded something earlier. Let me turn it down. to add an audio input feature, the microphone has to be desoldered from the board and uh, reattached via separate lines. Its capacitors and resistors are already present on the module, and all that needs to be done is it should be connected to the positive side of the microphone input into the chip. This schematic is from Casper Electronics, once again, on the website. And uh, although he describes putting this resistor and uh, voltage divider down here from if you're taking input from a line on an iPad uh, or an iPhone, um, these are not necessary. So 
So now I took the microphone off the board via separate wires. And now I can, um, and I added an extra input for audio in. Let's try it. Testing, testing. Testing, test. Testing, test. Testing, test. That's pretty good. Works well. I've now added a line in feature through this uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And let's hear what it sounds like with the pitch up. Nice. Now I put the output signal, instead of going to a speaker, I have it going to a separate op amp amplifier. It's going to amplify the signals through a uh, uh, one microfarad capacitor. And it is basically amplifying the signal and putting it out to a big speaker. So let's hear it. Now it's a lot louder and clearer. Now let's put the audio output through an amp. Working well so far. So for the next installment of this, now I have uh, the output of this, which has been going through a uh, capacitor, one microfarad capacitor, over to an op amp um, to magnify the signal. And the output of that is going through this 100 microfarad capacitor. And I have this, I, don't, I ran out of jacks, the quarter inch jacks, so I have this wired to a cable. This is the this is the positive side, this is the ground side, and that's going to this little guitar amp speaker. And so let's test it out. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That's nice and loud. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, that's nice and loud. Even on minimal volume. So... It's better than just driving a speaker. It drives an amplifying speaker. Perfect. Last but not least, it's a loop test, a test of the looper. So it comes with these little jumpers. And so the jumper, if you jump the area where it says PE, play, in a, uh, play edge, if you put a little jumper across there, it's gonna loop. So let's try this. It just loops. So I'll have to add a switch between those two pins uh, to be able to turn on and off the looper feature. So um, I'd say this pretty success, pretty successful build um, for today. Thanks for watching. All in all, it's a pretty awesome little chip that is going to allow for a lot of cool features to be added to a potential music device. Um, and let's test it out with some remix potential. Now let's see how we could put this together from a line in signal. Sounds pretty good. So this is my first look at the ISD1820 as a looper sampler chip, and it's awesome so far. The module is pretty good, even though I could have just taken the chip off and used it alone. But it was kind of fun to do all the mods to the module. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next installment.